Hey, it's a new video that's actually scripted and dissected. Amazing, I've actually done something with effort. Today's video is on a well-known figure in the MLP community, Lily Pete. Pete's video tackles the various complaints that surround the reboot of My Little Pony with Generation 5. The new show itself is not out, nor has it aired, but people are already worried and legitimately so. Pete, on the other hand, doesn't agree. Let's find out why. This is a bit of an old one, but it's skirted by me in the wake of all the Toon Critic nonsense. You see, Generation 5 of MLP has been rumored about for several months, and with each new supposed leak, people get more and more panicked. The usual fits over insignificant details, like Twilight being an Earth Pony instead of a unicorn, are to be expected, but- Yes, and that's the same with any show or movie that gets rebooted. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Fans grow attached to the mannerisms and characteristics of their favorite characters and don't like to see them change. Yes, people can get cringy about it. Then came the news that it was possible that Applejack could possibly be getting a black voice actress in the reboot. I just said possibly twice, what is wrong with me? Naturally, this news was met with praise and celebration from many corners of the Brony fandom. Part of the reboot can be an ethnicity change of certain characters. I honestly don't mind if it's done for the right reason and actually works. Ethnicity changes of characters that I've personally enjoyed are of Nick Fury from The Avengers, who is played by Samuel Jackson when Nick Fury is traditionally white, and Dr. Hugo Strange in Gotham, who is played by B.D. Wong, who is also traditionally white. It can be done to work properly with the story and bring an even greater depth of expression to the original character when done right. However, it doesn't always work out causing the characters or character to be completely destroyed and thoroughly misplaced in the story. And nowhere was that more apparent than on Equestria Daily, where the intelligent and critically discerning community there embraced this new idea with open arms and open minds along with no, it was a shit show, obviously. Just because it's a new idea doesn't mean it has to be embraced by everyone. Some ideas you can tell just from their description won't work and doesn't make any sense in regards to the story or characters. Can people be stubborn and close-minded? Yes. Can they also see in advance that something won't work out? Yes. Both are true. Let's see if people are just being closed-minded or are legit worried for their favorite character. Black AJ? Nope. Forced diversity is not for me, thanks. Killing a blonde, freckled southern character for some political agenda is the last thing I want to see. Bye! Okay. So, Octavio is worried that, just like with many other shows and characters, Applejack is going to get the PC overhaul and doesn't want near it. Nothing wrong with that. Does that mean they're right about their assumption with the political agenda? No, and this isn't always the case, but they do have a legit worry. Honestly, it's the fact that she's black that bothers me. She has no personality outside of race and racial stereotypes. If she somehow pulls off an interesting voice for Applejack that doesn't sound like some wannabe hood rat, then it might be good. Still, I would have preferred a character replacing Applejack instead of making a full 180 on the character we know and love. The least evil. So with this guy, I will say is assuming a bit much, and as far as I've seen in the show, as I've watched a little bit of it myself, Applejack is a strong character that does help many others and doesn't like to ask help for herself. Also, does this person realize where stereotypes come from? I'm not saying they're always fair to apply, but still. The hood rat comment is racist and what black character is usually aimed to sound that way unless that's supposed to be the actual portrayal, which in this case, I highly doubt it. As for completely replacing Applejack altogether, I can see this creating an even bigger mess and bigger backlash. This sounds to be a closed-minded fan and nothing more. They want to give Applejack to a black ghetto voice actress like female Tay Diggs. Also, entire VA cast is replaced. Only designs are similar to G4. Also, they want all kinds of SJW and LGBT diversity. Renly. Okay, so we do have another fan with a touch of racism. They do have a legit worry of Applejack plus the show getting the PC overhaul. The ghetto adjective was not needed to make their point. I've heard rumors myself that the reboot is going to have a bit more of material and content for teenagers in regards to relationships. As someone who is for traditional marriage myself, I will admit that I don't mind there being characters in same-sex relationships as long as it's not forced and it's natural for their character and story. 
Garnet from Steven Universe is a perfect example of this. Otherwise, I'm just going to blow it off or stop watching. I don't mind real life being portrayed as same-sex marriage is legal nowadays, but I don't want it to be forced down my throat. I fear for the worst as soon as I read the dreaded buzzword diversity. It seems they're taking a page from Marvel's failed strategy book. Lord Zareph, again another worried fan that the characters and show will be completely destroyed due to the PC overhaul. Also with the Black Panther, if you have noticed anything about Marvel, their movies are doing well but not their comics. When Zareph says, taking a page from Marvel's failed strategy book, they're referring to Marvel's comics which very much have become PC, thus destroying the comic line's profits and sales. The Black Panther is a hero that Marvel has had for quite a while, and his origin story was shown to which he's had for quite some time. But you know, let's just slap that clip it up there, not really taking in what Zareph was actually referring to. Tiffany Haylish is supposed to voice AJ at least in the movie, but they want TV series VA to match the movie with similar voices. I think they also follow Star Wars political agenda. You can see how SJWs worm their ways into industries and F-K them over. Negan will lead a new team, so we might at least save Spike and Discord at the later development when they figure out Main 6. The thing with AJ is clearly anti-white conservatist as response to Trump America. What is an opposite of country female redneck? Of course, an urban black woman. Both are legit worried about what's going to become of the show, seeing how many others along with comics have become destroyed or completely ruined with all the SJW nonsense pumped into them. Those worries are valid. Now as for Star Wars being political, yeah the entire series has been political since the creations of episodes 4 through 6. Not sure why that's new to them. Also there has been a lot of anti-Trump rhetoric stemming from comedy acts, comic shows, the list goes on. That does not mean that this is the case with MLP though. Man, these two really went off the deep end with their delusional nonsense. I like how this one person brings up how diversity is a failed Marvel plan. Didn't Black Panther recently gross a billion dollars? Mate, you're fucking nuts. Again, Renly and Zarif are worried about their favorite show getting ruined. Are they taking their worries into paranoia? Just a bit, methinks, but with what's been going on these days with the media, maybe not. Also, way to be arrogant again. I did just cover this. The Black Panther has been one of Marvel's heroes for a really long time. He is not new. Zarif's comment was referring to the comic book line of Marvel, which does have forced diversity in it, therefore alienated fans and ruining sales. Way to be pompous about it though and not fully delve into what Zarif was saying. It seems some people are under the impression that a black voice actress means that Applejack is going to show up in the next generation of MLP sounding like Flying Princess Ponyhead or Amethyst, two characters who don't have black voice actresses themselves and are doing a really bad impression of what they think a southern drawl is. In fact, just to really hammer that point home, here's just a small sampling of black voice actresses just based on footage I already had on my PC when I wrote this out. I can't comment on Princess Ponyhead as I have no idea who that character is, but as for Amethyst, when watching her and listening listening to her speak, I do get the impression that she's supposed to be a black character. I don't find her voice to be irritating or offensive to listen to in regards to the assumed race. That's just me though, I'm skipping this next part as it's examples that are played to show how black actresses give the proper southern drawl to their characters that they voice for. So it seems that EQD's delusional fears are unfounded, not to say that Applejack having a city accent would be a bad thing. I mean if you're that concerned about Applejack having a thick and distracting accent, maybe you should look at the one she already has. As I've already explained, the fans can concerns over Applejack's new character overhaul are not unfounded, seeing what has already happened to many other characters that were given the PCU or SJW treatment. Those characters that you mentioned in the examples all did have black voice actresses that were natural to the character as those characters that were being voiced were supposed to give off an impression of being black. Applejack is a southern belle or rather southern farmer with a voice that is natural for that. To give Applejack a completely different race structure if you will can jeopardize her character if not done properly, meaning it has to be natural for the new story and not forced. This is what the fans are worried about. Some are being paranoid, I will admit, but not all of them. And by the way, 
Fuck you. Applejack with a thick urban accent would be awesome. You people have no fucking taste. And don't get me started on the twats going on about erasing a character for forced diversity. That is your opinion. All of you are going to have to wait and see how Applejack is portrayed along with the rest of the characters in the new story. As for the comments, you glossed over all of them and really didn't pay attention to what was being said. Actually take the time to understand what's being said and make sure you know exactly what they're talking about. It's not that hard. Applejack has historically been the least appreciated character in the cast, with many of these same antisocial malcontents deriding her as out of character anytime she does something even slightly dumb. There have been jokes about her being a background pony since season one, so I doubt they experienced some kind of epiphany and stopped being paint-huffing morons. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about Applejack, nor watched enough of the show to even make a proper comment on this. With what I have seen, Applejack isn't always around, but there have been a few episodes dedicated to her character development or her relative's history, which in my opinion are pretty interesting. Outside of that, I would need to watch more to see whether or not Pete's claim about Applejack is valid. They're bitching about Applejack being changed, but it's a fucking reboot. Change is the name of the game. If you reboot something and keep all the characters exactly the same as they were in the last one, what's the fucking point of rebooting? Reboots are supposed to give a new spin or take on a story, whether it be a show or book. I personally don't see anything wrong with reboots, as long as they're done in a creative way that gives the characters and story new meaning along with new life. Also, reboots work if the show itself is not constantly redone in small spans of time. It's best for the remakes to be spaced apart, but unfortunately this isn't always the case. You can clearly see by all the whining about S-Jews and forced diversity that this is little more than alt-right fuckheads just veiling their racism behind the usual buzzwords because racists think everyone is as stupid as they are and will still fall for that shit. Way to gloss over all the comments and throw everyone who complains about forced diversity under the same bus. Seeing how though this is coming from the same individual who thinks anyone who misgenders them is a neo-Nazi, this is unsurprising. I've watched quite a bit of Pete's videos after getting curious, and boy, flaming lefty is an understatement. And this is shown by the fact that there are at least a few people in Equestria Daily's viewer base with some brain cells left. An open-minded fan who's willing to give the show a fair chance. No, not everything's about Trump or forced diversity. Also, yes, the wider of an audience that you can appeal to, the better. You took into account what TurboTastic said and gave them a fair reading. Why not do it with the others? Oh wait, you disagree with them, therefore their opinions don't count, and they're clearly of the alt-right. I always found it strange that a series that pushes so many liberal themes can have such a far-right audience, but it's evidently clear a lot of the fanbase sees the show as a repository for lore and memes, and ignores the actual content of the series, hence why they haven't caught on yet that Hasbro does this kind of stuff all the time. They're too drunk on lore to realize that 90% of the show is explicitly hammering home how terrible of a person they are. That's a lot to unpack. First, just because someone is conservative doesn't mean that they don't agree with liberal views or can't. Second, the show does have a lot of lore and there's nothing wrong with people focusing on that or even exploiting that further. Lore adds much more to a story when done right. Also, the content of the series is expounded upon and thoroughly dissected by the Brony analyst community, including character development, where the story goes and what the actual message is. There are many videos dedicated to just dissecting what the conflict of each episode episode is, how the solution was delivered on top of what the solution actually is. Finally, telling the viewer how awful they are is not the intent of the show. I don't even know where you got the impression of that to begin with. I mean, Ink Rose was hammering this forced diversity drum when people suggested that MLP have gay characters and she was just as stupid then as you are now. Wow, the arrogance is strong with this one. Why not show what she actually said like you did with the others? Nope, we're just gonna insult her along with everyone else who disagrees with your point of view. That's reasonable. Don't worry, bronies. This isn't a sinister plot to destroy you. The futures of straight white men everywhere are safe and secure. For now. <laughs> That was all kinds of cringy, Pete, but honestly, it's an expected sentiment from someone of the snowflake crowd at this point. I know it's supposed to be a joke implying that's what the MLP fanbase is worried about, but I have a feeling that there's a greater nuance being portrayed here than just a cringy joke. Either way, that wraps up this one. Sorry for the lack of content, I've been hesitant to do more content with YouTube's new policies in place, among other things. This is a new base for me to cover as I'm not really a fan of 
of the show, but do enjoy the creations that come out of it. Hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.